and I was so burnt out. I had no purpose left in me. I had no chesed. I, I was just done. I, I was completely done. Um, and it was, as a result of that, like I didn't know how I was gonna continue. And when the live events were getting back into it, I would have to go out and just, you know, go back to my very energetic, jumping around self that I used to be. Hi everybody, it's Arya Fingerer, and welcome back to the Jewish and Joyful Podcast. This we got to sit with one of the top singers in the Jewish music world, Simcha Liner. He spoke about being Jewish and joyful, and he spoke about the connection between happiness and music, and growing through music, and more topics. So hope you enjoy this interview. We have many more incredible guests and content coming soon, so please follow and subscribe for more. Our podcast is available on all streaming platforms. I'd like to thank R. L. Mishabura for the revolutionary project that changed the world, the Hebrew English Mishabura, and to receive brief inspiration and beautiful dietary Sherry Shabbos stable, subscribe to Parish Knowledge by emailing parishknowledge at gmail.com, or you can visit parishknowledge.com. For more information, please see the show notes. And now let's get straight into the interview. We're going to ask the first question, what does Jewish and joyful mean to you? So let's get started. Enjoy the sixth interview with Simcha Liner. Okay. How are you? Simcha, please tell us, what does Jewish and joyful mean to you? Jewish and joyful? Well, I think those are two very separate things. But uh, when you put the two together, you get the next level of joyful. Joyful could be both Jewish and it could be both mundane things. But when you take something joyful and make it Jewish, then you elevate it to a point where it actually has a purpose to help you be a better Jew. And what's the connection to music? Achieving happiness and growth through music. Um, music is really a part of our lives, even from you know the beginning of Jewish history. Times of the Besamekdas, music was a major um, contributing factor to Avaida, and I feel like uh, they had more music in their tefillah than they, than we have today. So. Even going back, you know, over 2,000 years, we see that music has been a source of emotion. And the same way emotion can be powerful during tefillah, can be or something special to, you know, ignite a feeling in you that uh, can help you become close to Hashem. The same way that uh, tefillah and music can move someone in a serious note, obviously the same way it can be applied to put someone in a good mood, keep them happy, make them happy in a time when they're not. But you know what? Sometimes when you're not in the best of moods, listening to a sad song is just as important. Listening to something emotional could be just as powerful as uh, trying to, you know, get yourself into a good mood and become happy. So I really think that uh, everyone should know the power of music and use it to uh, hopefully become a better you. My whole life is, is, is the story of making people happy with, with Jewish music. You know, there's a very uh, common feeling that anyone that uh, does this for a living, does this full time, um, will tell you that there are moments when you get, you know, Cholmai Pesach and you're doing your third show in one day and all the people standing, you know, in the crowd, sitting in the crowd, they're like ready to go. They're waited all afternoon for this. They waited all, you know, for this night uh, show to start. And as you... Uh, are about to get out there you're exhausted you have no interest you're traveling all day this is the third time you're about to sing the same songs in one day yeah. and you say how, how, how are you gonna you know how are you gonna feel anything and then you put that feeling aside and you remember what your task it is and you remember what you're here for and what you're doing and the person that usually ends up becoming the most joyful and the most happy out of it is me. Basically, anyone that tells you that you don't have, anyone that, that does this full time, does this, you know, for a living um, and tells you that this doesn't happen is not telling you the truth because uh, this is part of the part of your top kid is, is, is overcoming these type of challenges and, and uh, reflecting off the crowd. When there's a time that you're going through something hard, you have a challenge or something, give a motivation inspiration to help you get through that time because you're going into a crowd let's say you had a hard night or something how do you deal with that emotion right that's a good question every time is a uh, every time is a little bit different and you have mm -hmm. to uh, find that person in the crowd that's that's getting an amazing amount of joy out of what you're doing mm -hmm. and, and use that to uh turn that into a mirror who is the happiest person that you know yeah who's the happiest person that i know um 
a good question, but I, I could probably selfishly say that I'm probably the happiest person I know. I happen to uh, to be very grateful, and I, I have a lot of akarsa type to the things around me, not just to the people around me. You know, like I, I always say, when I sing a song like a uh, Kalbarama or Ribono, or you know, uh, the, the, a song like Home for my last album that people really enjoy people, you know, request them and ask for, to hear it sung. I, I have a car subscribe to those songs because without them, you know, I don't know if I would be on the stage that I'm singing that song on. Mm. So I, I think that kind of mindset is very, very helpful in just being a happy person and uh, being a joyful person. And, your um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. But a hundred percent, you could be a to things, not just people. During COVID, so obviously for people like singers, it was uh, an instant shutdown for our line of work, our Arnasa. Um, we couldn't do anything that involves a crowd, and that's what we uh, live our lives, you know, based around. So for most singers, that just became a time to just, you know, bunker down and wait for things to, to pass on by and, uh, you know, just take it easy or something like that. And I'm not sure why, but I don't do well with sitting in one place for too long. So instead I set up my garage to be a, like a mobile video studio. And every single mm -hmm. night we had thousands of people. This went on for weeks, for weeks, every uh, month of Shabbos, I would publish a schedule of what I planned on doing the next week to the extent that, by the time COVID was sort of over, you know, to, to the extent that people were starting to get back together, you know, and, and be outside, I had already, you know, done hundreds of live shows online and released special things in honor of, you know, people sit, being home. I did Halal on Rosh Chodesh. I did Kabbalah Shabbos on Fridays. Everything you can imagine. And I was so burnt out. I had no process left in me. I had no I, I was just done. I, I was completely done. Um, and it was, as a result of that, like, I didn't know how I was going to continue. And when the live events were getting back into it, I would have to go out and just, you know, go back to my very energetic jumping around self that I used to be. Um, and in the beginning, it was very hard until every single night, the amount of people that would come over to me and say, like, we could not manage, if not for something, every single day to look forward to. And every single day, my kids would know that if they do X, Y, and Z, if they attend their school conference call, if they, all this stuff, they know that they're going to be able to watch the live stream that you were doing. And all around the world, I had people from South Africa, Mexico, Brazil, Israel, France, Russia, like everywhere. They knew that they would be able to log in at night and that was like all i needed to hear to uh like completely be ready to hit the ground running again once uh we were out there that uh that, that's my job this is my this is what I'm here for. Yeah. yeah i have an album mr shem coming out it's a mr shem gonna be a chuppah album um yeah. a project relaxed style you know an hour and a half long all live jewish music as jewish as it comes Beautiful songs, songs that you know, songs that you don't know. Um, but even if you're not getting married, or even if you are married, it's still going to be a, an album that you want to listen to. And I uh, look forward to getting your reaction to it. Yeah. And just to end off, how do you explain the real power of music, the true power of music? So, the first thing that happens when a baby is born is their... Uh, their heartbeat beats on their own, right? That's they, they're they're finally disconnected from the source of you know life that they had before that, and they're on their own. And the first thing that indicates, you know, that a baby is on their own is the heartbeat, right? And the heartbeat is inborn time, time that every single person has. Now. Anytime someone's nervous, what happens? Their heartbeat picks up, their rhythm, their speed gets, you know, when someone has anxiety, it's all over the place. It's, it's they're not, they're, their heartbeat is getting faster, it's getting slower. 
when someone's having a very calm experience, their heartbeat calms down, slows down. This is rhythm. This is the foundation, the fundamentals of all music. Music revolves around tempo, it revolves around the rhythm, like a heartbeat. So when you begin to appreciate that music is essentially the same thing as your lifeblood, it's essentially the same thing as what keeps you alive, then you can appreciate how powerful music is. And that's why, you know, if someone wants to needs to pick me up, they put on something upbeat, a fast paced music, it, it, their body starts to be picked up with it. And this is just the from a purely physical, you know, perspective, the influence that you have to understand then that, you know, music has from a Ruchnis level is a whole different world. But just from understanding the bare bone basic, you know, basics of music, just think of it as the same way your body has a rhythm, the same way music has a rhythm, and uh, putting the two together can really change your life. Amazing. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. I'm so sorry. I hope you all enjoyed this week's episode with some Kaliner. Please remember to check out our other Mishnah Brewer, the revolutionary project that changes the world, and partial knowledge. Receive Torah thought stories and inspiration from Liki Parsha. If you'd like to sponsor or dedicate an episode, please call 646-397-2320. We are having some more incredible guests and content coming. Stay tuned. Follow and subscribe for more. Our podcast is available on all streaming platforms. And you can also join our email list by emailing parshanology at gmail.com. So thank you for listening and have an amazing day. Jewish and joyful. Jewish and joyful. Even when you pop a string. You still gotta do your thing, yeah! Choose, 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 choose.